the snowy, boundless plain was once again opening its wide arms to the young shaman. The cold blizzard hummed a melodious Altai song. From somewhere far away came the howling of wolves and dogs. Sao Xiant had ridden through these lands many times, and each time, the mysterious plane promised him an encounter with new knowledge. In the distance, a familiar light appeared, warming the northern Kamuranga. Sao Xiant, after removing his skis and shaking off the snow, entered inside, bowing and greeting to his master. The spirits told me that you would arrive today. Wise Cam, I had a dream in which you sang a wonderful song to me, but I didn't understand its meaning. I felt you wanted to pass on new knowledge. The old Cam nodded in agreement and handed his student a wooden bowl with a shamanic elixir. Drink this potion. It will give you strength and make you more receptive. Sao Xian took the bowl filled with a magical potion with a trembling hand and brought it to his lips. The strong scent of Altai herbs hit his nose and his head began to spin. Taking a sip, Sao Xian felt his senses suddenly sharpen. There was a ringing in his ears, objects started to blur before his eyes, and his body became weightless. Now he felt like an integral part of the entire universe. For some time, Sao Xiant observed these new sensations and finally began to understand the speech of the old Cam. Each person has their own deity that gives them a seer with a destiny at birth. For the servants of Erling Khan, the soul of Taios predominates. These people tend to live in the past with their thoughts constantly dwelling on yesterday. They leave a lasting memory on Earth those who receive Sure from Ulgin, on the other hand, are future-oriented. They develop the soul of Boss. They typically have many ideas, plans, and new projects. A person who receives Sure from Umai possesses great power and is capable of accomplishing great deeds. Their Kut soul is highly developed. A person, however, who receives their destiny from Tengri develops the soul of Ai, and they realize that life is ephemeral, and all that emerges from the dream world turns into a dream again in an instant. Such people are rare. They are chosen by spirits, they fulfill the purpose of the great shaman on Middle-earth. And after death, they go to the realm of Tengri, where they live eternally because they have forever separated their eye soul from the external dream. He saw the mighty world tree with its wide, long branches, a powerful trunk, and thick roots. The top of the world tree extended into infinity. On it, Sao Xiant saw the deity that bestows seer upon humans. He mentally asked the spirits to show him the god who had given him his seer. Before he could even think of it, a thunderous voice sounded from the distance. I am Tengri Khan, the ruler of eternity. And I bestow upon you the seer with a great destiny. You must become a great shaman. A blinding white light flashed in the sky, and the image of the deity dissolved into infinity. Sao Xian's gaze descended down the trunk of the world tree. Just below the top to the east, he saw a strong, long branch with a nest at its base. Staring into it, Sao Xian heard a loud growl of some kind of animal. It was a winged black wolverine that suddenly landed in the nest. I am your mother beast. I will feed your seer in this nest, which Tengri has given you. Why did you choose this nest? Because Tengri corresponds to the east, so your nest is on this side. If you had received seer from Umai, your nest would be to the west. If it were Erlik, then it would be to the north. And if it were Olgan, it would be to the south. And the height of the nest placement indicates a person's destiny on Earth. 
The stronger the shaman, the greater his destiny, the higher the nest. If you had a small destiny, such as being a shaman of one ulus, your nest would be closer to the roots of the world tree. But you are destined to become a shaman of the whole world. That's interesting. A mother beast can be of lineage or personal to each person. It's like a totem that helps in life. It is often an animal belonging to a certain deity, and all animals are distributed among the four deities. Can a person have several such mothers? No. Usually there is only one mother beast, and she appears only three times in a person's life. The first time is when she feeds the seer in the nest. The second time is during the shamanic dissection, when she transforms the shaman seer. After that, he can freely navigate the dream world in this seer body. His seer becomes distinct from the seer of an ordinary person. And the third time, the mother beast comes at the moment of death and performs a protective function, returning the seer to the deity who gave it. The young shaman continued to contemplate the shamanic tree, trying to understand the new knowledge that was entering him. Suddenly, he heard a beautiful, enchanting female voice singing a very melodic song in the Altai language. Sao Xiant became entranced as he listened to this beautiful song, which was initially not fully understandable to him. However, by stopping the flow of thoughts in his mind, he completely surrendered to the sensations. After a few moments, the meaning of this song began to reveal itself to his being. I am Ayami, the spirit of the land. Call me, and I will come to you. I will give you strength and energy, so you may become a powerful shaman. Sao Xiant felt a wave of passion come over him. But where are you? Why don't I see you? I am the spirit of the land. Come to me. I am waiting for you. What could this mean? And in that moment, he transformed into a powerful young eagle and, flapping his wings, shot upwards like an arrow. In another moment, he found himself near a massive, solitary rock in the boundless ocean, which he had often seen in his dreams. Whenever Sao Xiet found himself on this rock, his soul was filled with an extraordinary feeling of joy and grace. Now, in the form of an eagle, he stood at the very top of this beautiful rock, which was summoned by the enchanting voice. From the blue mist, an incredibly beautiful girl appeared with silver hair that reached the ground, shimmering under the golden rays of the bright sun. <laughs> the girl burst into melodious laughter and, transforming into a white bird of unearthly beauty, shot downwards. The eagle followed her, and they united in a love dance above the blue ocean. In his normal form, Sao Xiant once again found himself near the world tree, feeling the surging energy within him. It seemed to him that now he was capable of achieving much in this life and becoming a great shaman. What's happening to me? You met a Yami, the spirit of the rock, who often appeared to you in dreams. A Yami has given you the power to become a shaman. And after the shamanic dissection, you will be able to meet a Yami from any location, and she will help all the people living in her area through you. Why couldn't I meet a Yami of this rock before? Because before, like all ordinary people, you relied on memory and thought, and couldn't feel your spirit helpers, your guardian spirit. 
But now, you have begun to pay more attention to your sensations, and the world of the spirits has begun to reveal itself to you. Ponder this some more, and now, listen further. The silence and tranquility were suddenly replaced by a whirlwind with its powerful, rapid dance. Somewhere in the distance, the sound of a drum could be heard. Soon, Sao Xian saw the figure of a shaman emerging from the whirlwind. He wore a hat with large branching antlers on his head. Who are you? I am your shaman master. I have come to pass on to you the great secret of shamanism. By mastering it, you will become a great shaman of the world and save people from illness and suffering. Why are you the one giving me this knowledge? Because there were no shamans in your lineage, but you have been chosen by the spirits. So now, I will be your ancestral shaman, your shaman master. I will now be your protector. Receive my spirit helpers. Instant, the spirit helpers began to gather from different directions to the young shaman, swirling around him in a shamanic dance. Sao Xian felt a subtle, invisible connection with each of them, realizing that he was no longer alone. From now on, his spirit helpers would always be by his side. Sao Xian woke up at sunrise. The Yuranga smelled of fresh firewood and tea made from aromatic herbs. The Yuranga's entrance was raised, letting in a breath of fresh air, and at the doorstep appeared the old cam. Well, shaman, have you returned? <laughs> yes. To make it easier for you to absorb new knowledge, I've drawn a picture here. And with these words, he took out from his leather bag a piece of birch bark on which was scratched a picture. Here it is, the shamanic hierarchy that you experience today. It's all here. Sao Xiant moved closer to the northern cam and gazed at the picture. It depicted the world tree on the top of which sat a deity. This is the top tier, the deity who bestows this year. You see, the shaman ancestor is depicted with a drum in his right hand and a drumstick in his left. This signifies that he comes from the world of the past, where everything is backwards to pass knowledge to the future shaman. The mother beast feeds, transforms, and protects the seer, while Ayami gives a person the strength to become a shaman. All three of them are on the second tier of the shamanic hierarchy. Further down at ground level, the shaman was depicted. And this is you, the person who has become a shaman. Even further down, in the roots of the tree, various whimsical creatures were depicted. These are the spirit helpers of the shaman. They can be given by the shaman ancestor, or the person can find them during their life. For example, in the forest, any unusual tree, stone, or something else that you like can become your spirit helper. Similarly, you can find them in dreams. Sao Xian looked at the picture once again, closed his eyes, recalled everything that had happened to him the previous night, and felt that the great knowledge had entered him. Wow.